Hello. Oh, I look like a slob as usual because I'm always working on things. So, you know, why dress nicely when you have to work on things? And I really don't see the need for makeup when I'm going to get all dirty and dusty. Um, and yes, I do wear it on occasion. So, we had an issue. If you'll notice, I'm not in the camper. We bought a new property. And I am currently sitting in the master bedroom because the dogs keep knocking over the tripod that I actually found. I found one of the tripods. I had filmed the whole process of moving and something is wrong with my phone. Video recordings keep getting shut down. So, or they don't even work to begin with, or we forgot to tape them. So we basically lost the entire saga of us moving. And this move, no lie, took five months, six months. Uh, what happened is that my son and I were discussing moving to begin with because the property was great. Uh, I mean, 13 acres, it was great. We didn't have an issue with that. Um, we did have an issue with the layout because it was very long and narrow. So we were having issues trying to figure out where to put things and what to do. And the fact that it didn't have a natural water source was something that was always off with us. We bought it to begin with. My husband and I bought it to begin with because it was cheap. It was more of, um, a future an investment property for future retirement um and then when i started getting sick and the cold really started getting to me and i moved down there with and tim came with me because he wanted to change the scenery as well i think i said it but if i didn't all our videos are running a month behind right now until we get caught up um just yeah because of this move everything is just Everything just kind of came to a standstill while we dealt with all of this mess. We've been a Navy family for 22 years, moved multiple times, so many times, and I have never had a move this bad. Uh, we, we actually called this the move from hell. Back in September, I think it actually started in August or September, um, as I said earlier, Tim and I were discussing possibly moving and I said we, we can't move unless we can find an affordable property and property values were skyrocketing at the time in our area where we lived we could not find a larger property with a natural water source that wasn't outrageously expensive I mean the property values there shot up within just within the four six shoot Five or six years we owned that property. I sold it for a heck of a lot more than what we got, bought it for. I mean, not like millions, but definitely thousands. Enough that I was able to take the profit and put it down on this property to bring the payments down to a very a much more manageable level. So we were looking, I, you know, just check websites on occasion, usually realtor.com. And no, not sponsored. Um, and I just, we were, we were looking in Tennessee, which was actually our original state of choice, but we ended up here when we found the really cheap property. Um, and then more of East Texas, because that was the only place we were finding anything reasonable other than South Texas. And I mean, there's like patches of cheap property in amongst all of the expensive property and you have to be willing to do work if you want it. So this property showed up and I saw it and I showed it to Tim. I'm like, hey, look at this. It's got, it's private, more private. It has trees, which we missed having trees. It has a, a, two creeks and a pond 45 acres and it has a 4-2 on it mobile home and my husband didn't want a mobile home but I wasn't really caring about the house because 
we sold our property over there for fifty, you know, for forty thousand less than this property was up for sale for. So thirteen versus forty-five. And when I looked at other properties surrounding it, they were more expensive, so I knew something was going on with it. So I contacted the listing agent and I said, we're interested, what's wrong with it? I'm a blunt person. <laughs> and she said, well, I would like for you to see it and keep an open mind. And I went, uh-oh, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. And she said, well, are you using a VA loan? I said, no, we're not using it. We're doing conventional. She said, okay, then you might be able to get a loan on it, but with a VA, you won't be able to. So I said, well, we used our VA a long time ago, so no worries there. So the first showing we had scheduled, the sellers canceled because um, she says she has a lot of health issues, which I sympathize with because um, and then the second time we scheduled the showing, we, it's an hour and a half, it was an hour and a half from our original property and now I'm hot again. <sighs> My levels are off. Something else is wrong. So, um, so we, we scheduled the second showing and as I said, it's an hour and a half away and we were like an hour into the drive and the realtor called me and it's like, she's trying to cancel the showing. I'm like, we're almost there. So she said, okay, I'll tell her she just can't cancel because, you know, I think she, I think she made up an excuse, but whatever. So the seller had no options she had to show because I think the realtor told her she couldn't get a hold of us, but whatever. So we got here, found out the GPS does not know where this house is. Well, some of them, my GPS on my phone is the same one that my son uses and somebody else uses and my phone tells us to turn the wrong way and uh, the other ones say to go the right way so I don't know what's up with that so we got here and at first we we're like nice very nice and then we walked into the house um, actually the first thing we noticed when we pulled onto the property were dogs cabled all over the place or fenced in the back of the property. Um, they had an old beat up crappy fifth wheel being used as a dog house. Um, when we walked into the house, the first thing I smelled two things, cigarette smoke and dog pee. Those were the first two smells that hit me. And before we even came in, our realtor was like, just keep an open mind, just keep an open mind. And I'm like, I got it. She goes, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad. I said, okay, I got it. No problem. Uh, we came in. Yeah, we smelled all that. I was like, holy cow, those rugs are going to have to be trashed because they were, yeah. Um... We walked through the house. I have more videos on, about the house that I'll eventually upload. <laughs> so we, the bedrooms are actually a good size. Um, I love the island in the kitchen. The kitchen was good. The, I mean, overall, the layout isn't something I would have picked. But we've been living in a camper for, what, four or five years now. So... As my husband said, it probably seems like a palace to you. So we're, we were like, okay, not, not, it's not going to be a huge deal. And then uh, we also found out it didn't have a septic. It doesn't have a septic. And I asked the realtor, well, what are they doing? Because they have two full bathrooms and I don't see an outhouse. So the seller says that what they did was legal. I'm not going to say what it was because I don't know if it's legal or not and we're trying to fix it and I don't want to get busted with it if it's not. 
So we're trying to get um, septic companies out to get a septic put in, in a storm shelter. Because this is basically, if you go to um, Clayton Mobile Home Manufactured Home website and look up the absolute value, it's like 1950 square feet. Uh, four bedroom, two bath. Uh, you'll see it. They still sell this model. Uh, I do have a video. I said doing a tour, but it was kind of a, a very spinny video. So if you get motion sickness, don't watch it. Uh, selling our property was, I, I, I was just amazed at some of the demands of buyers. We had, our realtor looked at all the comps and said, okay, I think the minimum we want to sell this for is you know, this price. And I don't know that we should go over this price. And I said, well, you know, we'll just kind of keep it low. I want it to sell fast. And I need to talk to the bank first. Talked to the bank, found out what we needed to, get, to go down on it figured out what we needed to pay off the rest of that loan to pay off um, the cabin, the RV cover, or send them back because they're all rent to own and we can just send them back, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I said, okay, we need at least this much to pull this off. And she said, oh, you'll get more than that. And we, so we chose a number that was uh, on the lower end so that we can get it sold fast because we had to sell our property, take that, put it down on this property, and then the seller of this property had to take that and buy her property. So it had to go boom, boom, boom. And then we were going to lease our property back for two weeks so that we could get fencing up because they didn't have all the fencing we needed so that we can get our livestock moved over and get that property cleaned up because we're not gonna leave trash or anything on the old property, which was one of the videos that we lost because, um, yeah, we had all kinds of videos with all this and none of it went through. So the first offer we got wanted to purchase a property for 20,000 less than list. Not a big deal. You know, we expected negotiation, but they wanted the RV cover which was not included in the listing at all. Only the property in the shed and one of the chicken coops was included in the listing, nothing else. But they wanted the RV cover, they wanted the cabin, and they wanted the other camper that Kate was staying in. I said, you know, I can leave the camper. That's not a big deal. I, you know, it's not worth a whole lot to begin with, and it needs a lot of work. Well, they weren't done with their demands. They wanted me to, they wanted us to completely finish out the inside of the cabin. We didn't even have supplies to do half the inside and there was no way I had the money to do all the rest of it. And then they wanted us to renovate the old camper to make it livable as well. And I'm like, what? We were going back and forth with this couple, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then they came back saying that they also wanted, it. and I said, no, we're not doing any of that. And I am not selling this property, including all of that for 20,000 less than list price. They need to come in at least at list price, if not more. So they agreed to that and they agreed to not, but then they wanted to move into the camper and needed to know if it was livable. I'm like, well, my daughter lived there. It does need some work, but, um, and it does have a leak near the front, so that's gotta be fixed. And I'm like, okay, we can fix the roof for you, but that's about it. That way, and, and technically I said, no, actually I said, we will move it under the RV cover and then you won't have to worry about the roof leaking because it'll be under the RV cover. <clears throat> well, then they wanted to move in before closing. Um, that's a hard no. I don't know these people. We have a react, we have an aggressive dog. 
who doesn't like strangers. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. No, we're not doing that. I don't mean, no. And then if the whole deal falls through, I've got people living on my property. Um, one day I will get nightstands so I can actually. So that deal, the realtor said, and then they wanted this and they just kept adding demands and the realtor finally advised us to just walk away. So we're wasting time with this. We have other people who want to look at the property. I mean, we were getting showings like every day. You know, this is dumb, forget it. And then we had this issue with people making all these demands, but wanting the price for cheap. And we said no to quite a few offers. We finally got a cash offer. He needed to close at the end of December. And we would be, um, and he, we could lease it back for however long we wanted, free of charge. Okay. Well, then something went wrong with the property the sellers of this was going to get. I mean, it was just, things kept going wrong. Let me just sum that up. I mean, I could keep going with all the stuff that went wrong or was delayed. So we put in an offer on this property, September, October, I think. I'd have to go back and look at what I have on the timeline. I did post some stuff on Instagram um, about it, but so if you find Herut Homestead on Instagram, you can look back at that if you want. <sighs> but it took us until February to close. And at the initial closing, the sellers were supposed to move out of the house so that we can move in and start working on fencing. We had a verbal agreement that it's okay if they left their animals while they got fencing set up at their new place. Um, but then things at their new place wasn't going right. And we came to do the final walkthrough and they weren't even halfway moved out. And I looked at the realtor, I'm like, uh, this is an issue because we need to move. You know, Alan came down from Maine through a snowstorm <laughs> to get here. We need to, we need to move. He's only got a couple weeks and it's going to take us that long to get everything moved over and get everything cleaned up. And she said, I, I know, I'm sorry. Um, they need a lease back. I'm like, we're doing a walkthrough before closing and you're pulling out a lease on us. And I, I kind of feel like I was pushed into it because it was, we were talking about it and they need just a few more days after closing. I said, okay, a few days is fine. We don't need a lease for a few days. And the realtor got close to me and said, you need a lease. So that if anything happens, you have a legal means to evict. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> so we discussed with the seller and the realtor and myself. And I'm like, look, you guys have to be out in a few days because we have to move. Because Alan has to take the trailer back with him to Maine because we have to start moving our stuff down. That's been up there that we haven't been able to move down. She's like, no problem, no problem. We'll be out of the house. We'll be out of the house. But I need, um, I need to leave my animals. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So we talked about it, and basically it came down to the lease was going to be mainly for her animals. She had to have her animals out about two weeks after the closing. I said, that's, prob that's not a problem. We already talked about that. I already agreed to it. No big deal. So she signed the lease, um, which I realized recently that I never got a copy of. So I have to contact the realtor and ask her for a copy of that because we're having issues with them getting, they got all their animals off, but they have left a ton of trash. They left the crappy fifth wheel that they were using as a dog house. They left their pool, which, you know, it's just like a Walmart cheap Intex pool thing. They left a whole bunch of tires. 
And then we walked the property and discovered they left a whole bunch of stuff near a cross fence that I am really ticked off about. They took the power pole at the corner was a, her son lived in a camper. They took that power pole that was part of the sale, um, which I'm really not overly concerned about that, but because she said, oh, that's my dad's pole. And I'm like, well, it's part of the sale. So I'm going to tell your dad. Um, yeah. So we've had nothing but issues with these people. And they're very nice to your face. And then they don't follow through. So we did have an issue where I guess people are calling it snow bed happened. She um, asked for an extension on cleaning up and I gave it to her because we needed the same extension from our buyers because Texas is not, they don't have snow plows. They don't have salt and sand that you put on the roads. They do have a chemical that they spray on the main roads, um, some sort of combination that helps keep them from freezing. But people are driving crazy and we almost got taken out on one of the trips to and back to take care of our livestock because Tim's truck can't tow everything, heavy things. It's a lighter truck. So we need Mike truck to tow because, you know, it's a super duty dually. And I couldn't get off. I could not even get off the property because I can't use the four wheel drive still. And I can't, I don't need new tires because my tires are bald, you know, and we're looking at $3,000 for all that. And that's just going to have to wait because I have to do a septic and a storm shelter, no storm shelter here. So, and we've discovered several issues that they covered up, but I mean, I could keep going on and on about that. So Snowbid happened. I gave them an extension. And then after it snowbid, a week of rain happened. So I gave them another extension because there's no way they're getting that camper off because it's all mud. And it's a fifth wheel. And I don't have a fifth wheel hitch. And they had to get someone with a fifth wheel hitch or something to pull it off. That was a month ago. All of that ended a month ago. So as I think I said, all of our videos are like a month behind except for this one. All of their trash is still here. That camper is still here. So I have to contact her because I do have her number. And now I, I, what if her mail was accidentally forwarded here or wasn't forwarded, was sent here, even though it has a forwarding thing on it. So I have her address now. And I have to get them out here to get this done or we may end up in legal avenues. Um, because it is blocking us from doing what we need to do over there. But I was trying to be understanding because we needed the same courtesy from our buyer. And our buyer was absolutely fine with it as long as we got everything cleaned up. And we did. We got, I mean, we were every day, we were out there every single day after the rain stopped in Tim's truck. And then when I could get my truck off the property and onto the old property because if you remember it doesn't have a driveway <laughs> so I had to be able to drive over the the ground um, and we were finally it took us two weeks to get everything done which is what we had done for the lease back so that's about how long we thought it was going to be but with that and the weather it was a month after we closed that we were finally able to get off the property. So I'm very thankful the buyers of our property were so understanding. I just realized how good 30 my glasses are. Holy cow, no wonder I can't see anything. Now I tried to offer that same understanding to the sellers of this property. Um, and basically I think I just got taken advantage of. So as far as the whole snow bit thing, we actually, um, I stressed more about being away an hour and a half away from my livestock than I did about not having power. Um, we did lose power. We did not lose it as long as some. Um, I, I posted 
with the move and everything, I posted a can of soup I had opened and it was kind of frozen. <laughs> it's on my Instagram. Uh, I said, the soup, it's a little cold. <laughs> but um, we got... We, we got our power back relatively quickly compared to a lot of other people, so I cannot complain about that. And then we did the rolling blackouts, and once we figured out the timetable of the rolling blackouts, we just worked around them. And I have a uh, solar lantern, so we were able to use that. So we, we, we did okay. Um, the main thing I was concerned about was most of our food and everything was still at the old property. Uh, and our livestock and by the time we were able to get back there by the time the roads melted enough and I could actually we could actually get over there we discovered that uh, the water at the old property was um, not only froze and blew out the ranch hydrant but the well the whole area is supported by a co-op well and the wells in several towns ours included broke. Um, they actually froze and broke. Somebody drove by, so of course all the dogs have to alert me. Um, and then the entire, pretty much the entire north and north and east, northeast Texas were in boil water notices. We never lost water here, which we are extremely thankful for because we had to haul water an hour and a half to the livestock because we, there was no water on the old property. So, um, every single day we had to haul, I think we were hauling 60 to 70 gallons at a shot. I have to go check because we have emergency water containers from when we moved and for our emergencies. And we had to haul it every day down there and we the, the their waters were so frozen we couldn't even break through them uh we did for the horse watering trough i did do the salt water trick where you put salt water in a container and put it in the wa water trough and as they drink they move it and it keeps an area open and that did work for them we ended up losing one of our sheep um we don't know if she died before the snow hit like right before, um, after we left, or if the other sheep pushed her out and she froze to death. Um, so we're down to four sheep now. Uh, two of our goats had their kids, two does. And next week is um, MRI and more blood work to recheck for the cancer. Seems a lot of work. There's gonna be a lot of work on the property we're basically starting from scratch they left some of their chicken coops and we discovered they leak like crazy and we already lost a rooster who got stuck in an area and i think he drowned during a rainstorm so we're, we've got to get it all fixed up and i even though i'm going to do check out legal avenues for all their junk they left behind um i have a feeling we're probably going to end up cleaning it, which I'm going to be royally ticked off about because it's not cheap. So if you want to follow along with our uh, basic, we're not going to do a huge remodel. We're going to clean up, uh, replace some of the floors. I'm steam cleaning the carpets to see if they will be okay for now. Um, there is some mold issues, not bad i'm just under the kitchen sink which has started me coughing because mold and i don't get along so um we're gonna have to we're we're gonna have to pull out the kitchen cabinets at some point and uh we we need to try to figure out what all we're doing so we're probably going to do a low key just like clean and paint to begin with and then eventually we're going to rip everything out and redo it this is a uh, a two by four construction so ideally i'd like to rip the outside walls down and sister two by sixes in and put in better insulation and um i don't know we'll see how it goes we'll see so we're gonna get used to mobile home living um and a storm shelter gotta get the storm shelter and the septic done first and then we have 
Uh, I have to find a new farrier. Thankfully, my sheep shearer came out here. It's on her their route. It's two young ladies who are who do a great job with the sheep, um, and they're fun. I like fun. So they came out and sheared the sheep already. So they've been done. They've been taken care of. So it's one thing off my plate, but I do need to do hooves. Um, book one of the over hostly bucks. His horns are growing into his eyes, so we have to trim his horns, and I'll probably do a video on that, along with his hooves, which all the goat hooves, for some reason, all the goat hooves have gone crazy, and all the sheep hooves are normal. Um, like, they look like they haven't been trimmed in a year. So, and I know I've trimmed them, so um, that's going to be the fun part, too. So, lots of stuff coming up, lots of... Um, probably going to do now that I have a full size oven, probably do some baking and cooking videos again. Um, yeah, we'll see. You guys have a great day. Bye.